You've often heard people compare a ship to a city. Now, this is no fanciful figure of speech. Take most of the activities of a busy town and most of its male population, pack them aboard a naval vessel, and you've got a condition of pure reality. Whether it's work or worship, eating or sleeping, or being entertained or keeping clean, this is life being lived by a concentrated population. That very concentration sets up problems. Problems of sanitation, ventilation, lighting, and safety. As members of the medical department, whether your ship is large or small, you have the responsibility to ensure the maximum of health and comfort that the design of the ship permits. This takes detailed observation in both formal and informal inspections. Sanitation is at the top of the list. Everybody likes to live in a clean home. But there's more to inspection than just looking to see if things appear to be clean. At a superficial glance, this birthing compartment seems to be clean. Maybe it really is. But you've got to look close to make sure. This is how a locker ought to look. Although neatness doesn't necessarily imply cleanliness, the chances are that a man who keeps his gear as tidy as this keeps everything else about him clean as well. On the other hand, this may be a clue to other problems. Matters of sanitation affect everybody aboard, in every part of the ship. Thirsty? Even a fixture in constant use by many men doesn't have to look like this. There's no excuse for the butt in the first place. As for the rest, what's obviously needed is frequent cleaning. Here is a well-kept head. The deck is dry, valves are working properly, there's no trash lying about. It looks fine. But is it, really? A place that smells bad isn't clean no matter how it looks. Whoever cleaned up in here apparently swabbed the deck around the fixtures and just kept on swabbing and smearing. Hard to reach places like these demand extra effort. Speaking of swabs, this is no way to stow them, particularly when they're damp. This is how the place should be cleaned, with fresh water and clean swabs, especially around water closets. But swabs and water won't stay clean throughout a job of this kind. Water should be changed, and swabs rinsed clean so they won't smear dirt around. And just as important, swabs must be cleaned after use. Then they should be dried outside in the fresh air. The usual rule for inspecting is that you will be out looking for problems. But sometimes the problem comes looking for you, vigorously. The man has a familiar complaint. Doc, our compartment is too hot. Nobody can sleep in that hole. Can't you do something about it? Well, your first thought may be that things are tough everywhere. The ship was built the way it was built, and nobody can squeeze any more air out of the ventilating system than it was designed to deliver. Undeniable. But maybe the situation isn't entirely hopeless. The thing to do is find out about it. This is a problem for the medical and engineering departments together. 
Since comfort and health are involved with the mechanics of ventilation, an engineer will go along and inspect the space with the hospital corpsman and the man who has complained of discomfort. Sure, it's hot. Hot and humid. The man was right. There doesn't seem to be any circulation of air at all. Even a man lying quiet gets in a sweat. What can you do? One thing, your skipper can request a survey by the industrial hygienists next time you're in port. But before that, have a look around. Your own inspections will often reveal conditions that you can improve. This looks like a good device a filter to keep dust from dropping down into the living space. But the very dust that it's meant to collect clogs the cheesecloth until it restricts the flow of air. Off it comes. No ventilating system will work efficiently if people tamper with it. It's designed and adjusted to deliver a definite amount of air to a given compartment according to the requirements of the space. Further, the operation of the ventilating system is balanced to meet the requirements of the whole ship. So you should have a look at the adjoining compartments while you're about it. Now, here's something. Sailor-made ventilation. Nice for the man who sleeps here, but not for the one he's taking fresh air from. In the next bunk or even in the next door berthing space. Somebody will be getting the word from this engineer. Looks more comfortable now, and your efforts will be remembered. Maybe it isn't always this easy, but certainly there will be times when you can correct or improve a condition of discomfort. Certain spaces aboard ship have special ventilation problems. The laundry is one of the hottest working spaces aboard, one where extra fresh air has to be pumped by the ventilators. Yet it has a way of clogging its own exhaust. Lint from the dryers. The stuff has to be frequently removed or it will clog the exhaust gratings so that almost no air can pass. When you find such a condition during your inspection, often just a word will suffice to get it corrected. Of course, the fire rooms are the hottest places of all. Here, it is impossible to maintain temperature at a comfortable level with relation to the temperature outside. Special fresh air ducts are provided to give spot relief. It is essential to health that these be kept in top condition. And you should be aware of the possibility of heat stroke in engine and fire rooms. Most below deck spaces in a naval vessel have to be artificially lighted. Efficiently lighting them is as much of a problem as ventilation. When you hold sick call, you want the best light you can get. You couldn't do your job well without it. If you were inspecting your own sick bay, you'd insist on the proper lighting for the purposes of the space. This same idea applies everywhere else aboard. For recreation in off-duty hours, the light should be sufficient for comfort. The problem here isn't so much a lack of brightness as a condition of inconvenience. You probably can't correct it. But as a result of your inspection, your ship can request an industrial hygiene survey. Many ships have had individual bunk lights installed. Proper lighting for the purposes of the space. You'll often find special lights on various pieces of equipment within a space. It's easier and safer to do a job like this with the proper light. Another point to notice in your inspections is the lighting in spaces adjacent to brightly lighted ones. The eyes need time to accommodate themselves, and a man in a hurry might not have time to wait. This business of adequate lighting is very closely associated with shipboard safety. You will certainly recommend brighter lights in this passage within the limits of darkened ship requirements. You don't have to be making a formal inspection of safety matters to run into a condition like this. Maybe the old hands will tell you that slack chains are a condition of life that you get used to. But when GQ sounds, nobody's got time to risk his neck.
You get the idea. In your inspections for safety, you will be on the lookout for anything that could be a hazard. An unguarded hatchway. A smear of oil that could cause a fall. Luckily for you, someone already caught this one. Now, so far, we've been looking at each of several shipboard spaces to emphasize each of the aspects of inspection separately. When you make an inspection, however, you will apply the practical plan of inspection for sanitation, ventilation, lighting, and safety together in each of the spaces you visit. When you inspect a berthing compartment, your examination is both general and specific. Is the place well lighted? Is it well ventilated? Is it generally clean? Are the bunks arranged for head to foot sleeping to reduce the possibility of cross infection caused by men's breathing in each other's faces? Are the mattress covers clean? and the bunk bottoms. This is a place to look for bed bugs along the canvas seams and lashings. Now how would you classify this? Sanitation, certainly. If there's food left in there, it will draw vermin. But safety, too. In rough weather, that thing could fall off and hurt somebody. A thing like this should be brought to the attention of the mess deck master at arms. We are purposely omitting from this film the inspection of galleys and associated spaces, inspection of food storage, preparation, and service are covered by other pictures in the series. Sanitation is the big thing in showers and washrooms, though of course they must be well lighted and ventilated too. While you're looking to see that the equipment is clean, test the faucets and see if there's a waste receptacle. If not, there will be soap wrappers and razor blade packages thrown on the deck and in the toilets. They say a man isn't safe even in his own home because he can always slip and fall while bathing. A slimy shower deck is a deadly weapon, especially when the ship is rolling. Such a hazard should be removed immediately. Making a note of it for future correction would not be enough. The right way to go about it is to send for the master at arms or section leader. Explain the danger and have it removed on the spot. The barber shop should be as clean as your own sick bay and the barber himself as clean as you are when you hold sick call. Details are most important. See that he uses a throwaway paper neck strip for each man. The apron serves many customers and could transmit infection. The common shaving brush is out for the same reason. Combs are used for more than one customer, but between uses they should be kept in a sanitizing solution which is changed daily. Also, they should be frequently cleaned with a detergent or ammonia water. The powder brush is no safer than a shaving brush. The barber should use a clean towel and use it for one customer only. The first time we visited the machine shop, we discussed lighting only. 
But in almost any workspace, you can find several aspects of your inspection responsibility. On a large ship, you'll find a dozen or more small private coffee messes. They can present a bad sanitation problem, unless they're well organized, as this one is. Since there isn't always a sink handy for washing cups, the best plan is to let each man buy his own cup and be responsible for keeping it clean. This reduces the chances of contamination and infection. A machine shop can also be a dangerous place. How about safety precautions? Cautionary signs are valuable as long as they are good and legible and prominently displayed. And the point of inspection for you is to see that they are obeyed. Another point is to see that machine operators wear prescribed protective gear, in this case, goggles. Beside the normal requirements of ventilation, a space of this kind has at times a very special requirement. And here the conditions of safety and ventilation become one. If it weren't for the exhaust blower to carry off toxic fumes, you could bet on seeing this man in sick bay before tomorrow. Your inspection may be formal or informal. But whether you are making an inspection at a scheduled time and place, or just going about the business of shipboard living, you are in a sense always inspecting. That is, looking out for the health, safety, and comfort of your shipmates and yourself. When you find a condition that needs correcting, what you do about it is largely up to you. But the keynote is judgment and tact. Sometimes a word or just a look is enough. Another time you may have the opportunity to improve the general well-being by responding to a complaint. Often you will make note of a condition that must be reported to other authority for correction, like inadequate lighting in a certain space. And sometimes you will have to request immediate action, as in the shower situation where safety was involved. When you have to make formal reports of conditions that you've tried again and again to correct, make them informative. Put into them your best recommendations for remedial action. In brief, make your inspections conscientiously and follow them up. Then you will have done your best to ensure good conditions of sanitation, ventilation, lighting, and safety aboard your ship. Thank you.